Hey, I'm John Cristani and I've made millions of dollars online and I'm gonna go over the reality of the Amazon FBA business opportunity. I've been seeing a lot of people talk about and I'm gonna lay out point by point what you should know before you even consider starting an Amazon business. Let's get it. Hey, John Cristani here. I run a seven-figure internet business. and I've been doing this for years without any employees. And I've seen a lot of people talk about Amazon FBA, start an Amazon business. And I'm just gonna kind of like point out the realities of the situation to help you understand before you invest thousands or tens of thousands of dollars in starting an Amazon business so you don't lose your shirt. So the first thing to understand about Amazon is there are six million other sellers that you are competing with, okay? It's a very competitive marketplace. You're literally competing with six million other people. Now that's not to say there's a lot of people making money here, but the reality is, look on my screen here, there have been a growing number of articles talking about how people are losing tens upon tens of thousands of dollars because people are being taught that they can get rich quick. And right here you'll see it was only after they'd sunk $40,000 and nine months of nights and weekends that they realized that they couldn't make any money on Amazon. So the reality is this is a super competitive marketplace. And if you're not willing to invest, you're going to have to have at least like $25,000 to really make it with FBA. Again, this is a business and you're going to have to come out of pocket a lot of money. So there's a number of gurus, gurus out there that I've seen saying you can get started for as little as a thousand dollars. Are you joking me? A thousand dollars is will get you nowhere on Amazon. You have to deal with physical products. You have to have customer service. You have to have a support website. You have to buy all the products months in advance, label them and send them from China usually to an Amazon warehouse in Tennessee. You're coming out of pocket a lot of money and you're spending a lot of time before you're even going to begin to see a nickel on that, okay? The second thing you have to realize is costs, okay? To start the program, you have to pay 39 bucks, okay? No big deal to be a member of Amazon FBA. But what they're not telling you is to store your products in their warehouse. FBA means fulfillment by Amazon. It means you ship your products months before you sell them to Amazon and you actually have to pay Amazon to store your products for them, which sort of doesn't make sense, right? Because they're making 25% cut on whatever they're selling through their store. So off the top, you're already paying Amazon 25% and you're paying them usually something like, let's round it up to about a dollar per foot of warehouse space per month. Now, I'm not gonna do the math here because these are not hypothetical situations. However much product you have, you're gonna have a bunch of feet that you're gonna have to have your product sitting in Amazon's warehouse for months and you're gonna have to be paying Amazon the storage fees, which are quite high. And on top of that, you're paying them money. So the costs are very real and you're gonna have to be willing to come out of pocket thousands or more likely if you want success, tens of thousands of dollars to even hope that your business works out. And the reality is for most Amazon sellers, you're gonna have to go through product after product after product after product to figure out a particular product that works and that markets well and that actually hits. So you'll have to go through trial and error many times before you do this and all the time you're paying Amazon for the storage fees, you're making a much lower margin than you think, you're paying monthly fees, and you've come out of pocket for all of those products. Once again, you're still gonna need to have customer service, you're gonna need to have a website, you're gonna need to have all of this sort of stuff to deal with just the inherent things with a product-based business. It's not easy to start a product-based business, it's not cheap. The third thing you have to understand about Amazon is bans, okay? It's so easy to get bans. I mean, there was just an article out, come over here. Look at this. Amazon has banned thousands of sellers, okay? Here's 11 reasons Amazon 
can ban your account, okay? They can ban you for any reason what they want. If your product quality is not high enough, they can ban you, okay? Let's say you kind of don't want to invest as much and you want to kind of skimp on customer service, right? Or product support. They can ban you if you don't respond to customers, okay? Or if you don't deliver a product fast enough. Let's say you're trying to fulfill the product on your own. They can ban you, your entire account, and all of the money you invested in product because your delivery took too long or you delivered to a wrong address. For logistics, they can ban you for abnormal account performance. If you make too much money in a day, let's say you start selling a lot of your product, they can ban you. If you use the wrong UPC code, there's a million reasons. If you get reviews the wrong way, let's say you ask your friends or family for reviews of your product because you're trying to get your store off the thing, they can ban you. They can ban you for a lot more reasons than that. And there have recently been reports of thousands I don't know if you've read the news lately, but thousands, I think over 10,000 Amazon sellers were banned in a weekend just because Amazon did a sweep and they just banned tons of accounts. Now, this will bring us to our fifth point, which I'll go over in a little bit, but bans are a serious problem on Amazon. And again, you're reliant on a single platform. So if you don't sell that product on Amazon, you are out a lot of money. Okay, and that's a big cost. Everything you've invested in your business, if you are banned, it all goes away and you've lost a lot of money. The fourth reality of Amazon FBA that the gurus aren't telling you is that there's a lot of fraud on Amazon. The biggest source of fraud is review fraud. Now, again, I already stated this is a reason that Amazon can ban your account. If you try to get reviews of your products, in an unfair way, let's say you ask your brother, your mother, or somebody associated with you, Amazon's the biggest company in the world. Do you think they don't know if you're getting your mother, or your brother, or your friends, or your family to review your products? Of course they do. They have very witty algorithms to figure that out. So one of the things that Amazon has been doing lately is just banning lots of reviewers. A lot of uh, Amazon sellers have been using what are called review farms. They pay some individuals, usually in Russia or China, to review their products or have a lot of Chinese or Russian people review their products so their products can look more appealing in the marketplace. Now this has caused lots of problems for Amazon. So on one hand, they are banning accounts. So if you do that, you'll get your account banned and there have been other problems with that. So you see, you know, there's Amazon routinely, this is from Business Insider, Amazon routinely removes accounts and vendors that violate its review policy. But new data shows that it has drastically stepped up its enforcement this year. What that means for you as a seller on Amazon is that once again, you are reliant on a single platform and if they close your account, all of the money that you had invested in product goes away and you end up with a huge loss. And the margins you're hoping to make are generally pretty small on products. So again, that's a big problem. And you look, there's even a, a Reddit forum called the Great Amazon Purge. There's a forum devoted to talking about all of the people who have been banned from Amazon. It's a big problem. Now, the second side of the review fraud is that people can also use it against you. I talked about how you can you know, hire Chinese or Russians to review your product and move it up. But the opposite can also be true is if, let's say you're selling notepads, right? Big, big fat notepads. And let's say you enter in the market and you start moving up the rankings and people are buying more and more of your notepads on Amazon. Existing people in that market can actually fraudulently review against you and they can hire a bunch of people to give you one star reviews and say that your product quality is horrible and they can say that you don't deliver on product, etc. Now, look at this. You, you can have people hijack your brand, deface it. Look at this. Phony fires. Sellers will buy their rival's product, light it on fire, and post a picture to the reviews claiming it exploded. Amazon is quick to suspend sellers for safety claims. You can have your entire business shut down in the beginning because a competitor bought your product and claimed it exploded. That's 
how easy it is to just ruin your business. Again, and this is all gonna come back to our number one point. Here's another example of the massive fraud that can go on and how competitive it is. So there's defacement. So a competitor can actually click on your listing and say that you've misappropriately labeled the product you're selling. They can say, instead of selling notepads, you're actually selling pornographic images. That would be another big problem. And the sophisticated people on Amazon can hire 20 people to say, hey, I bought a product from these guys. They're all pornographic images. This is a front. This is a front for selling child pornography. And suddenly, boom, all of the money that you invested in buying a product from China, shipping it to Amazon's warehouse, is all gone in an instance. And it's gonna take you lots of time and money to even try to recover everything. Now, the number one problem with Amazon is a very obvious one. And I've stated it a few times over the course of this training, but it's reliance on a single platform, okay? When you are selling on Amazon, your entire business is reliant on a single platform. If you buy into a guru's business opportunity about starting an Amazon FBA business, once again, this is the business you're starting. You've put your entire business and made it fully reliant on one company who has the power to say you can keep selling or you need to stop selling or we will put your products at the top or we will put your products at the bottom. Again, you have no control over your business. Whenever you're reliant on a single platform, you don't have a business, plain and simple. So to all the gurus out there that are peddling Amazon FBA businesses, these are not businesses. These are outlets. Amazon is a great outlet to sell a product if you have a pre-existing product. If I own a notepad company or a light company or a camera company, it is a great outlet to sell my cameras or my lights or my furniture or my lawn chairs or my pillows. But Amazon FBA is not a business you necessarily want to start unless you have some key advantage. But once again, if you're thinking that the way you're going to get rich is starting an Amazon FBA business, or if you've invested money already, you're playing a risky game. I know people have made some money doing it, but once again, it's a very risky game and it's very cutthroat. So just be advised and be aware of the risks associated with the business. Now, if you wanna learn more about how to start an internet business, I've been running a business online since 2012 and I've been making millions of dollars a year without any employees, just kind of living like a digital nomad and doing my thing. I advise you to subscribe to my channel. You'll get access to a couple free courses. I personally do affiliate marketing. You can learn about that. You can also check out some of the free mini courses that I have available about copywriting. One of my friends does run an Amazon FBA business, so you can check out his material there of what he posts about. And I have a number of other friends and mini courses on my channel where you can learn more about how to be an internet entrepreneur. It's a really great life. Put a like in the video if you enjoyed this material and put a comment below if you'd like me to expose more kind of scams or expose the reality of more situations.